The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. How offenses come. We are saying that carefully avoid if you can. So if we know how they come, it will help us in trying to avoid offenses. But let me say that I will not be able to enumerate things that causes offense one by one because some of the things that i've heard cause offenses are just imaginable so the next thing that is going to cause offense is yet on the way it has not arrived yet so i cannot say that i know things that cause offense so i will not attempt to be listening because i'm sure that i will miss the one that has caused you offense and that alone can cause you to be bitter against me <laughs> so i don't want to be <laughs> someone offending people uh, when I'm teaching offenses and bitterness. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, this world. <laughs> but see, I know <laughs> for sure pa, 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 pa. that offenses could be real or imaginary. As for this, I know. So offenses are either real. The cause is real or the cause is just imaginable. It could be direct or indirect. Sometimes, the cause of what people cause offense could just be imaginary. Not real. Other times, some people tend to share in others' pain and offense. They were not the actual person you offended, but they share the pain and the offense of the one you offended. And then they also try to <laughs> kind of hold some grudge. Against you. I'll give you some examples in scripture. So I will start with real and direct offense. Now this is real offense. And it is direct offense. Someone decides to cause the offense. First Samuel chapter one verse six. Up to ten. Because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she, till she wept and would not eat. Now her husband, Elkanah, would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than 
ten cents. Na ni kuno elkana eka chere no se hana aden na wusu na aden ana wuni die na aden ana ubunyo ni nyame mau ensine emeri madu. You see, we should always handle women who have not had issues very well. This question that this man is posing to the wife, she will not answer. No barren woman, a woman who has not given birth, no, none of them will answer this question. Don't I mean more to you than ten sons. She, 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 she wants the husband and she wants the ten sons. That is always the answer. answer. So they wouldn't answer. And you, no. Handle the women who have not yet given birth well. Don't be careless with words when they are around. Don't be careless. I'm sure you are you are you are, you are processing it. Especially pastors and elders. Don't be careless with words. Once women like that are running. Once when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli the priest was sitting at his on his chair. By the doorpost of the Lord's house. Now Debbie, we did the ena we num ye evi e was silo no. Ana sorry ye. Now so now so for Eli, Eti egaso e radia sorry da ano ano pumi ano. Now pay attention to the verse ten. Afeti e e mu do look at the effect of what this lady has been doing to the rival. Che niya ni kura no e ye no Hana no niya eko ye ye no. In her deep anguish, Hana prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. Na nekra vire hoi na obo euradim pae na odia isui. So the effect of what Penina was doing has really caused bitterness and great anguish. We are talking about anguish. We mean pain in the heart of Hannah. And then and she decided rather to go to God and pour out the bitterness. Tinya nekra penina e yeno no e di yaudie e ni agre wash and nekra swa. So you see that this offense is inflicted directly by Penny Penina on Hannah. Now, so this is real offense. And it is direct offense. But no one, please, no one should behave like Penina. I will discuss that later. Trying to cause offense. Setting traps so that people will be offended. Try never to do that. So I will take the next one. Next example. So the first example is real and direct offense. I will take the second one. This one is real offense, but indirect. You see, David's son Absalom had a beautiful sister. David, Absalom, no, named Tamar, a friend of Tamar, and Amnon, her half brother, and the eldest son of David, fell desperately in love with her. Amnon became obsessed with Tamar that he became ill. Now she was a virgin. And Amnon thought she could not, never do it, have anything to do with such a woman. So Amnon thought. She, he couldn't have her. See, Amnon's so-called love was a sickly erotic obsession. Amnon's physician deepened because she was a virgin. She was sexually untouched. Now, Amnon, 
Nansu nu ni mse sanse ni nu yano ye bebu ninti no. Wa ye denya o nyano. But Amnon had a friend. Nansu na Amnon o wadam fubi. Who was a cousin. Na sa wadam fubi no ye ebusi ya yonko. Named Jonadab. Na o ye busi ya ni ye friend ni Jonadab. And the Bible says that the King James said that Jonadab was a very subtle man. Na chero se mse Jonadab na o ye niti fubi. So he was described like the Bible described the serpent. Very subtle man. Or you need for very shrewd guy. One day he came to the palace. That there be oba and if you and so the the king's big son Amnon um not looking too well. And will be whom said ya Amnon I know on the So he inquired and Amnon told his story. No, ni ni diu kwa mano. Eno kana sem chere. So this is this is nothing. No, oh, where do you say you asem kitwa? I'll show you what you do. Me chere kwa yao be fast. Just pretend to be sick. Yeah, we must say on the airport. Call the king. Omodiya ko na na. And ask him. Na kachere to tell Tema to attend to you. Na kachere ni so omo uni aba no emesha u. So that was it. We eat ya kura. Then when Tema attends Amnon, who feigns illness. He seizes her, raped her, and banished her from his room. Now, brand new, you are born in a normal nobody. No, no, Obomodi had to share. No, so they die. And what Pamo no, he free in jail. Second Samuel thirteen. Yeah, first Samuel, how much? It was me. No, it did do me. From fourteen. It shall see if he would do nine. But he refused to listen to her, and see, and since he was stronger than she, he raped her. Now so one person who tell you no, now in them say, no one yet ding a sin unti or brain was say any no die. Then Amnon hated her with intense hatred. In fact, he hated her more than he had loved her. Amnon said to her, "Get up, get out." And Amnon, a day a tiny case here, tiny no p a sin or door or the door no. Now Amnon can't hear no say sorry ko. Now, how can the love turn instantly into hatred? Because that kind of love was a getting love. Once he got what he wanted from her, then the love is gone. And what is left is hatred. Let's be careful of what we define as love. Now, so the lady appealed, please don't do this. And the Obama Catherine said, Yes, sir, it will be a greater wrong. A bay young from Swaka say, Now, you, I can go out myself. Yeah, me, I met my call because she will bow me, come in with her servants. The son said, All them look and be a son or the Nasu for the known servants were also around. Now, I'm not in Kwanso, no Ben. Why do you banish me? Not the entity and I'll pam me. But this young man forced the sister out. And so. And then when he she found out that she's been disgraced, she decided to let everybody know. Now who said she said yeah, your brain has a good name as in OSA and yeah, will be a bit. Verse 20. Her brother Absalom said to her, Has that Amnon, your brother, been with you? Be quiet for now. My sister is your brother. Don't take this thing to heart. And Tema lived in her brother Absalom's house, a desolate woman. Now, Ninu Absalom Bisano say, Wunia Amnon, and you are Dana, na Efe, Minia, Muawano, or Yunia, and Fa Wakoma, and to a semi so. Now, Tama, the Agri Hot, na Ninu Absalom Fee, cum. So Absalom saw the sister. Absalom, who Ninu, from the way she was behaving, who said the Oyan Hono? Absalom could read. Who said what had gone on? A semi yesi. Because the robe that she was wearing, the dress that she was wearing, signifies the king's children who were virgin. Now she's tearing those uh, clothes apart. And then Amnon said, Has that, you see, see how he's going to describe his own brother? That Amnon, that, 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 don't, don't worry. Don't take it to heart. He was not offended. She, he was not the one who was kind of offended. But you see, he is sharing in the offense now. O shed ye sinua na Absalom who ni nua bano atadi o shese bebuno no se se die ye ye fi no ho kura nti o hunu se debi asembi asi ne no e ma ne hunu se ni nua no ebia ni nua be ma na ye ni bibi nti o hwe no se 
asem wi wo de akwa koma to yem ya yentia no ya yetia obi nanso ya no no ne no che one of the things that always pains me about this lady is that the bible says that the entema lived in her brother absalom's house a desolate woman na no me bia eye eye me won won anase me ta hwe e wo we ho no tero sam se na tama the awire ho etena ni nua absalom fie ko imagine this beautiful lady wa be hwe oba fe 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 king's daughter o him baba kama kama she were to marry Ah, anko ware ya. But because she couldn't overcome the pain. And so went to me in this She lived in her brother's house, a desolate. But they were hot now. Nini ya be manifest o bia ni huni faso. When the king heard it, he was furious. So now the king is also going to share in the offense. Now oh, he David tie asem we no. Ni bufu yi. 22. Ye twaso e dio ni mi e no. And Absalom never said a word to Amnon either good or bad he hated amnon because see the word because he had disgraced his sister na absalom any amnon and kasaboni and a papa na absalom tane amnon say what brain in your time as he this act is not directly against absalom absalom but he feels the pain now so otiyano and identifies with the offended that is tamer and takes the brother amnon on na ninu aba na ya bre na se ninti no ono so eya ne ya masi sei otane amnon see after 2 years absalom avenged tamer as the nearest relative by killing the big brother amnon okay we in fear me no echi no absalom e ku ninu aba ma i'll take the third one so near to some yes offense that are imaginary we a year since you are to a young casa you're going to know i didn't see offense this offense what we are going to do with this one is imaginary sir since you are to a a yenya nipa no no jing jing home now just fancied a idea no jing one keke a the real cause was just imaginary it was not like this fellow taught i didn't know now and said and see into a new partner and what you know and everyone yeah i've had some experience like that i don't want to repeat them i don't want to repeat them let me go into scripture and so i mean you know because i said i was going to talk from scripture not from, <laughs> not from my office so i'm going to try and stay in scripture first samuel 18 from verse 6 now samuel was old and the lord was with him verse 8 verse 8 when the men were returning home after david had killed the philistine the women came out from all the towns of israel to meet king saul with singing and dancing with joy joyful songs and with tambourines and lyres. Na worry ba David resign every felicity a kum no no abano a ma a free Israel and Kroninamu at the Jong Nea Sa Ebisia or Hinesalo. What in painting any and Niji ne a Hinasa a dear. Are we together? I hope you are listening to me. Yes. As they dance, they sang. And this is the refrain of the song. Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. Now a man worry grow no what J won so say Saul a kum a pem na David a kum and pim do the moon. Now Saul was very angry. And Saul Bufu we can see this refrain displeased him greatly. Now in some no any no day. They have credited David with tens of thousands. He thought this is just something in their mind now okay i said what the impim do i'm a david but me with only thousands now media a pimp and what they are what more can he get but the kingdom a ding na a can of you say a hini you know where the women talking about you just throwing so a man no one cast will be too now they were singing their songs as out out of a sight and then the king says what is this a new man he got offended. You have credited me, the king, with only thousands. And, and this small boy, tens of thousands. He he thought, how much more? 
he will get the throne. The next verse. It's a big one. And from that time on, Saul kept a close eye. Now, the New Living Translation says that from that time on, Saul kept a jealous eye on David. Saul now, why the jealous eye? I will, I will try and give the suggestion. The answer. Shortly. The next day, an evil spirit from God came forcefully on Saul. He was prophesying in the house while David was playing the lyre, as he usually did. Saul had a spear in his hand. And he held it, saying to himself, I will pin David to the wall. But David eluded him twice. Now, the chain no now, what was the foundation of his imagination? Why was he keeping a jealous eye on David? Why did the woman's song guard him? Why was he thinking of losing the throne? See, normally, even things be imagined, it is founded on something. It could be based on what happened yesterday. Then they bring an interpretation to what you are doing today. It may not be real. Now, why? I think that for Saul and for many, it, it has some foundation. I shall suggest the foundation. I hope it meets uh, your specification and it convinces you. First Samuel chapter 17. From 55. So I'm going back to the chapter before this. Before I saw Watch David going out to meet the Philistine. He said to Abner, the commander of the army, Abner, whose son is this young man? Abner replied, As surely as you live, your majesty, I don't know if he's a Ghanaian, you add no to it. Now I so, don't know. Now, Saulo, who David said, Or if he had the Akusha Philistine, you know, or country, the Safo Hine Abner said, Abner, why in back near Brandy? The king said, Find out whose son this young man is. Now, the king Now, before he could find out, verse 57 says that as soon as David returned from killing the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul. With David still holding the Philistine's head. Now David the free Philistine no kumre sign abano. Abna fano ed the no ba solo and him na Philistine no three ekuran in some now fifty eight. A fifty a do no and watch no. Whose son are you? Na solo. Young man. Why a bano? That's a very important question. Wait, ne yan ye papa. Saul asked him. David said, I am the son of your servant Jesse of Bethlehem. Now, David Boyer said, Wakua is I, Bethlehem, Nino, Ebaneme. It is written in the law that the king will come from Bethlehem. The king will come from Judah. So I'm sure that when Saul was selected from Benjamin, some people said this is not right. And to me, say, we ye solo, a fee Benjamin, a busiamono, ne binomo kase mm a yachia. Because they know from the law that the king will come from Judah. It sounds a wind nim wom renimu, sa or hineno as a so free Judah busy. And this man is saying that 
my father, that old man. So Saul will know him. That and this man uh, is from Judah. And they are from Bethlehem. And they are branding kwa akwangwa i ose me fi yuda busiyo kuonim they are no no na they are same ever. So when the women started praising, ma ma ne sha si ese wodi ayi yudum ever no. Edrio, I see. So we are there. So he kept a jealous eye. It is ha bring onu we tune ni ese abranti. The jealousy was all so that he would not take what belongs to him. So na he will not take. Or treat ni kru esan se adi ebi ayi or no soul di ano no one person will be befa. Whose son are you, young man? Yeah, abranti kwa why you banu? Very important question. We ne hear no ye papa papa. From that day he kept a jealous eye. If he said ano o tune ni ese no so. So. That was that was why he was imagining there. They are belittling me now. Because they want to take the throne for this young. See, many times bitterness come about because of insecurity. And false interpretation of people's actions and inactions. And false interpretation. Now people fight for their image and hold grudge against anyone who they perceive will not want them to prosper. Just talking about just a perception. Okay. We, uh, we People they perceive will or want to outshine them. If they, they see that you will outshine them or you want to outshine them, sometimes they take offense against you. I want to say one People they perceive want to take their place like David want like what Saul was imagining. And many other reasons. This is among royals. At the workplaces, these things happen. It happens among siblings. Within church leaders and church members. It happens everywhere. It happens everywhere. So offenses many times. Uh, I have this and that. Okay, let me just push it and finish this. Some offenses many times are self-inflicted. Some offense to just it's coming out of jealousy and envy. You are just uh, imposing the offense on yourself. Like Genesis 30, verse 1 and 2. When Rahel saw that she was not bearing Jacob any child, she became jealous of her sister. So she said to Jacob, Give me children, or I will die. Now, Rahel, who knows, say, on one man, Jacob, no, or she, ni ni amba no, who cry. Now, or can't she, Jacob, say, ma me ma, na anyesa me u. Just she became just jealous of the sister. We na e ya cry she and walk she. Give me children, or else I will die. Ma me ma, anyesa me u. Jacob became angry with her and said, "Am I the am I in the place of God?" Who has kept you from having children? So you see that this man is sheer envy. A feeling of discontent. And covetousness with regard to her sister's advantage. We can take offense of someone's success. And possessions. You see, we should even be careful of dreams, what we call dream. You just be an imaginary thing. You can dream and your mother is chasing you with a cutlass. What will you do? So you wake up in the morning, hey, my mother. I didn't know that my mother. Yes, yes, yes. Now, my mother, I didn't know that my mother. 
Now, when it's here, no panel say, hey, if you are seeing small, and then from that day, if it's hard, no call, you don't go to your mother any longer. Don't call mommy, hope you. Your mother is a witch. Mommy, they say, what done before? No, but mm. that was just a dream. Now, so now you die, and I was. Mm. You are thinking of yours, eh? Oh, you know what you are. I see. Sometimes, you, you, a wife can have a dream of the husband having an affair with a friend. These things are real. Yes, I know. And this is just a dream. Say, hey, this is my friend. Oh, God, thank you for revealing this to me. Maybe God too has not revealed it to you. It is the food you ate that is revealing that to you. But not God. I see. Some of these things, you must weigh them carefully. Sometimes God, but sometimes it may not be God. So be handle dreams well. Otherwise, you can take offense just based on dreams and imaginations and revelations from people be careful and the dia yes so kra e see hwe ni e san se e to de bi abe so dai no na na esi no enya dia esi ankasa yen hwe yen dai so ye so let me just put a comma here to me the san ho e wa ha and then i will talk about offenses against god sometimes we even think that god has offended us e to de bi a ye en se o yakopon aye bribi ma ye mpo ye di ne ho ya o so yeah it's better than what i said <laughs> it didn't go for yeah. Yeah. and it is true yeah, no because pass. it's a big one i will hold it against next week but may the lord bless your beautiful heart may you guard it you can't do anything about bitterness some are real and direct some are real and indirect some are just imaginary others are self-imposing yeah but whatever happens they are offenses but Guard your heart. Now, so bow akuma hoba. Guard your heart. Bow akuma hoba. So that someone's ugly behavior. Now, obi abrabo a enfa ku emu no. Will not destroy your beautiful heart. I'm a say wakuma fefe. It happens everywhere. It see what baby ya. So you are not insulated against offense. Inti nyadi a obetu mi e jani sinti biato. You only have to guard your heart. Esa bow akuma hoba.